Happy Sunday, bird watchers, and welcome to the first view queue of 2022. And not only do I have a bunch of really great viewer questions today, but I also have a great giveaway for you. Sunday bird watchers. It's Robin. I hope you're all doing well out there. Now, if you follow my channel, you probably know that I stopped doing view cues last fall. And so I have all of these great viewer questions built up and I'm going to get to a bunch of them today. But first, I want to tell you about a great giveaway that we have thanks to Tom at Rock Pals. <laughs> This is the Rock Pals 500 watt solar generator. Now, I'm obsessed with these things. I think they're such a great tool when you're on the road. Essentially what they do is they store and then give out power so you don't need to be hooked up to some other power source. So this 500 watt solar generator or power box can be charged three different ways. You can do it on your car charger and your cigarette lighter while you're driving down the road, which is what I like to do. Or you can charge it on a solar panel, like this 100 watt solar panel that Rock Pals has, or you can charge it on a regular wall outlet. Then when you wanna use the power, you can plug in your 110 devices because this has a pure sine wave inverter. So regular items that you would plug into a wall or even your electronics are safe. You can charge your phone. You can charge 12 volt devices and a bunch more. So like I said, Tom from Rock Pals is graciously, generously giving one of these away. And he's given us some great discount codes to purchase it if you're not the lucky winner. If you want to enter to win the free 500 watt solar generator, you must be a subscriber of this channel and then email me at crvprizes at gmail.com. This is a special email address that I set up just for this. It's only going to be good from today through May 6th. And honestly, you guys, I'm not going to read the emails. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put it into an online program that randomly chooses a winner, and then I will respond to the winner via email, tell them that they won, and give their information to Tom at Rock Pals, who will then send out the solar generator and the panel. Now, also down below at the top of the description and comments, you are going to see Tom's email address because if you're one of the first 30 people to order one and then write him, he's going to send you a Rock Pals Creativity RV branded t-shirt. And if you're not one of the first 30 after that, he's going to send you a $15 Amazon gift card. And both of the links to get a discount on Amazon on Rock Pals is going to be below. They're giving us 22% off on the generator, which makes it $360.39. And they're giving us 15% off of the 100 watt solar panel, making it $179.99. Like I said, the links are below. These codes will expire on May 30th of 2022. So good luck, everybody. I'll announce the winner next week on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, before I get into the questions, I know some of you are going to ask me about this lovely t-shirt that I'm wearing. I finally got around to redesigning and posting all of my merch and t-shirts on Amazon. This is one of them. Here is an example of the other ones. I'm really proud of these, you guys. So the link is down below for these t-shirts. If you want a great RV themed t-shirt, you can get it there. Okay, let me get on to the questions. Oh, I have to tell you guys, I got so many questions about kitchen gadgets and RV gadgets and meals that I'm going to do some special videos just on that topic. So if you submitted a question about that on Instagram or Facebook, where all of today's questions have come from, then just know uh, I'm not answering because I'm going to make whole videos because the questions were so good that um, I don't want to just answer them in one sentence. Okay, here's the first question from Sherry or Cherie. For a single traveler, which do you feel safest in, a trailer, a motorhome, or a camper? Well, you guys might know I've had a B-plus van, I've had a Class C, a fifth wheel, and now my truck camper. And, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting question because I feel safest driving the truck camper and then second safest driving the fifth wheel. Um, 
With the all-in-ones, it is nice to be able to just jump into the driver's seat and take off if you need to, um, if you're in a situation. But honestly, I haven't had many problems. I have another question about that coming up. Um, I know as a woman, we're told that we have to, you know, be able to have an all-in-one where we don't have to go outside to get into our rig, and I completely understand that. And I am cognizant of the fact that I have to get out of this rig and get into my driver's seat to be able to take off if there's a problem. And so because of that, um, I have weapons in here. You guys might know that I did a video, I'll link it up here, um, about RV weapons. And, you know, I'm not naive, but um, it's Home Alone 2.0 in here. So I, I think, you know, camping out in the middle of nowhere where the boogeyman can get at you, um, you know, should be a concern, but it's not my biggest concern. My bigger concerns were how safe I felt driving the rig. Um, you know, if I'm going down the road and I'm being knocked over a foot in the wind because the rig is off balance, uh, like has happened in some of my other rigs, um, or if it's just a, you know, a harder rig to drive on like switchbacky mountain roads, I take that into account also. So, you know, it's a mixed bag, but, um, I would say my first one, which was the B plus van or this truck camper made me feel the safest. Okay, next question. Oh, J.R. Marquis, you gave me three questions. Okay, number one, how long do you think you'll live on the road? Um, are you seeing everything is more crowded with the influx of campers, or do you think they're just sitting in their driveway? And what do you do to keep from getting bored? Okay, well, I don't think I'll ever be off the road. I mean, sometimes I think maybe I'll get um, a little piece of land that I can stay on for longer periods of time. But I feel like I've just scratched the surface. I've been on the road full-time for five years, and um, I'm still trying to see the East Coast and Canada and Alaska and all kinds of places. And I, I really, I don't have any desire to be in a sticks and bricks. I'll just put it that way. Again, um, I imagine I'll do this until I can't, <laughs> until I'm too old. Um, and he said, is everything getting more crowded? You know, in the places that I go, the places that I usually boondock, I'm not seeing that. I know that campgrounds are totally booked, um, especially, you know, State Park, National Forest campgrounds, campgrounds near popular areas are booked. You have to reserve things like a year in advance. But luckily, you know, I have Harvest Hosts, um, which I have a link for that down below. That's my go-to. And um, Hip Camp, I'm going to be doing a video on that soon. Um, and then mostly I boondock, you know, which is free. And I think a lot of people are still unaware of that or they're, you know, too scared to do it. And so, no, I usually hardly see any people where I go camp. And what I do to not be bored is I have kitchen dance parties. Yeah, I uh, I dance around. You have to because sometimes, you know, the weather's bad and you can't get outside and get stiff in little rigs like this. But I have uh, dance parties and then um, you guys know that I have an Oculus VR headset. I'm able to connect with my friends and play putt-putt and stuff like that. Um, but really, especially in this rig, I'm going somewhere every three, four, five days. I never get bored. I find it very exciting. I mean, even just sitting in the woods for five days in a new place, I, I don't get bored with that at all. Okay, Dog Lover 60 had a couple of great questions about appliances and recipes, and so I'm going to tackle that in another video. Thank you. But then she said, which rig did I wish that I skipped altogether? Okay, like I said, I've had four rigs and absolutely the one that I wish that I had never ever looked at was the Tiffin. Now I'm sorry, I know that there are gonna be Tiffin lovers who watch this video and they're gonna go, ah, I love my Tiffin. Look people, that was not my experience. I had a Tiffin Class C, um, it completely fell apart. I mean, I could stand in the bathroom and wave at somebody in the bedroom because I could stick my arm through the wall. <laughs> That's how uneven everything was. Um, the countertops came off. Um, the walls separated. The cabinets separated. There was a major structural issue with my slide. They would never tell me what that was. They just said there was an issue. Because of that, I had to send that back to Tiffin. I think that was in Indiana um, because they came and picked it up. And I was without my house for two months, and I lived with Doug. Thank goodness I had a place to go. But when they returned it to me, it was worse than it was when I sent it to them. They left some skylights open, mud came across the ceiling. There was like 
two cups of dried silicone in the shower where they clearly were trying to stick things back together. I think, um, you know, it's tough when you have a sprinter chassis. Those don't carry a lot of weight. And I found that with my Leisure Travel Van and with my Tiffin, um, I felt like the construction maybe wasn't as good on a sprinter van as I've seen in my other rigs um, because they're really careful about how much weight they're putting on top of those chassis. Okay, Realist Idealist said, did I teach myself to paint or did I take classes and would I consider traveling abroad? Okay, so you guys might know that I paint. Um, you know, when I first got on the road, honestly, I brought all the paints with me because that was a dream and I didn't paint at all. I just <laughs> couldn't find a good setup. I didn't find the time because I was doing YouTube. But that has all changed recently. I paint incessantly now. I took classes in high school and in college. And ultimately, I got into a special writing program that I had to be accepted into once I was a junior. And our classes are just really expensive. The studio, the studio costs are insane. So I let that go um, back then. But since then, I have studied with some people um, like Elizabeth Kincaid and some other people. And um, I just really love it. And recently, I have been getting into digital art which I never thought I would do. If you guys want to know more about what program I'm using, I don't have to bring all my paints on the road anymore because I can do it all on my tablet, which is really fun. And when I travel abroad, yeah. In fact, I'm kind of looking into it now. I know people that have traveled um, in New Zealand and in Iceland and around France in RVs that they either rented or, or tent camped. And it's a little bit different from what I'm learning over there, but I'm thinking about, you know, renting a van or renting a Class C for a year and just, you know, going and seeing Europe. That's my dream. So if I do it, I'll take you guys along with me probably. So that should be fun. Okay, Julia Luli says, is it stressful trying to figure out where you're going next? Sometimes, sometimes, um, you know, especially with COVID and you, sometimes I didn't know what was gonna be open. And especially if I'm going to a place that's really special and I can only stay like three days, then, you know, the pressure is on a little bit. But I've developed a method to finding spots now and an arsenal of um, camping resources that I use that I've told you guys about before uh, that I use. And it's no, it's not that big of a deal at all. Um, I think it's kind of fun now. I got way more stressed out in the beginning. OK, and finally from Wander Booming on Instagram, they replied to this picture where I asked for view cue questions by saying, where on earth was this fabulous picture taken? <laughs> well, it was taken on a public land near Las Cruces that Eric from Wander Boom found. And he is a genius at finding spots. And I was lucky enough to travel with Eric and Robin and another friend um, a little bit earlier this year. And I have to tell you, he found this spot. It was great. It was public land. It was free. But it was one of those spots that I never would have gotten into with the fifth wheel uh, because there was no way to turn around when you got down to where we were. And it got really, really cold. It is cold out there. We just headed that direction a little bit too early. I couldn't even dump my tanks. It was just really cold, but pretty. That's it, everybody. Again, if you want to enter for the giveaway email CRV prizes to enter and the discount links for everybody else are below. If you want to put in a question for the view queue, I am now going to take questions on Facebook and Instagram. That's Creativity RV at both of those places um, on the weekend before the view queue. So I can give you the most up-to-date information. And I'll be seeing you guys next week with a whole new video. Until then, I hope you're all doing well out there. Have happy travels and be free.